Good morning, good morning, good morning. My name is Brother Leroy Pearson of the Greater St. Paul EME Church, where our pastor is Dr. Reverend Toby H. Pollock. And I greet you all this morning in the joy of this knowing Jesus. All oh, the joy of this knowing Jesus. I praise God. I thank God for this day. I praise him that he, he brought me through another year into this year. And as I sit here this morning, praise and glorify his holy name because he is so worthy to be praised. This morning I'll be coming to you I'm coming at you all with our church school lesson. Lesson number seven, January the 16th, 2022. The laws of justice and mercy. The laws of justice and mercy. Law, commandments, or revelation from God. When we're looking at the book of Exodus 23 is where we're coming from today. Book of Exodus 23, and our focus is Exodus 23, 1 through 12, understanding that these are the laws that God gave Moses to give to the children of Israel, excuse me, the Israelites, that he led out of captivity. Because they were doing all kind of reckless things. They were living any kind of way, making out of God, doing things that was not of God. Justice, the quality of being just, righteousness, equable, and immoral righteousness. Standing up for what is right, doing what is right. Holding your head up into a way that is pleasing to God because we know the great judgment comes from God. So God wants us to do what is right, what is equitable in his eyesight. Don't do things to try to bring glory to your name or help somebody out, but do things that are going to be pleasing to God, that it will bring glory to God's name. Mercy, cat, compassion, or kindness for tolerance, showing toward an offensive, an enemy, or other person. Just because somebody does you wrong, continue to give them mercy. I know you say, well, we human, we, how we gonna do somebody done did us this, this, and this. If God is in you, he will prompt you to continue to do what is right. Because like I said, we cannot get justice. God gives justice. Only thing we do is continue to do what does says the Lord. And God said, if your enemy defends you, continue to give them sugar. Continue to treat them right. Continue to do what does says him. And he will take care of it because his avenging is his, not ours. So we have to continue to do what does says the Lord. Live according to the word. And he will do the rest. He will take care of us. He hasn't brought us this far to leave us now. So we have to continue to do what he tells us to do. And our key verse this morning, you shall not follow a major in wrongdoing. When you bear witness in a lawsuit, lawsuit you shall not side with the majority so as to pervert justice, nor shall you be partial to the poor in a lawsuit. Understanding what God said, don't just jump on the side with everybody else out because you don't want to stand out for what is right. Stand up if you're standing by yourself, but you're never standing by yourself because if you're doing what is right, God is standing with you. He has your back. This because nine out of ten want to go this way knowing that the person is innocent, continue to stand on God's word. Continue to do what is right in God's eyesight. That's why the laws of justice and mercy rain down from God, doing what is right, standing for God. As you always say, if you don't stand for what is right, you'll fall for any old thing. So stand for something. Stand for what is right. Stand for God's word. Be a true patriot of God. Let us look to the hill this morning before we jump into this lesson to see what does says the Lord. Our Father and our God, we pray, we glorify, and we magnify your holy name on this Sunday morning. Thanking you, Father God, 
for just being God Almighty. Father, we thank you for the early morning rise, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for never leaving us, not forsaking us. Father God, as we come this morning, Father God, to learn what does say is you, oh, Father God, open my hearts and mind to receive your word. Cultivate right now like only you can, Father God. Rain down, shower down your word upon us, Father God, that we may walk in a way that is pleasing to you, Father God, doing what is right, Father God, seeking your faith, Father God, and allow you to continue to be God of our life. We thank you. We praise and we glorify your holy name on this Sunday morning. Father God, touch right now. Father God, remember the ones, Father God, that don't have a shelter over their head this morning, Father God, or oh, send someone that's in y'all, Father God, to bring them in out of the cold, out of the rain. Father God, do it right now like only you can. And Father God, when it's all said and done, we be also grateful to give your name all the glory, the praise, and the honor, because you are so worthy to be praised. We ask these blessings in your Son Jesus' precious name. We pray, Amen, Amen, and Amen. The laws of justice and mercy, Exodus twenty-three one through twelve, and we understand that when we look at Exodus, we're looking at the book book of laws. We're looking at the books where Moses. Well, God talked to Moses and gave Moses the commandment, telling the people how they should live, what they should do. And the justice for all is what we are looking at today in this section here. Justice for all. Not justice for some, justice for the writ, justice for all. Not justice for the one that think everything that go their way, but justice for all. Exodus 23, 1 through 12, NRSV reads like this. You should not spread a false report. You should not tell a lie. You should not do things that isn't contrary to God's word. You should not join hand with the wicked to act as a malicious witness. A mal mal malicious witness. Malice witness, excuse me. You shouldn't join with a group just because. Do what is right. Stand up for what is right. You should not follow a majority in wrongdoing when you bear witness in a lawsuit. You should not side with the majority so as to pervert justice. Don't do that. Do what is right. Understand, growing up, a lot of times we get caught up in things that we know is wrong. And instead of we walking away, we want to go with the crowd. As you grow and you get older, you come to understand, you have to stand up for what is right. When no mean no, you mean no, and you walk away. Whoever else want to go, you let them go. But you know what is installed in you to do what is right. Nor shall you be partial to the poor in a lawsuit. Don't be partial. Don't do what you want to do. Do what is right. Do what God commands you to do. When you come upon your enemy, ox or donkey going astray, you shall bring it back. And I thank God for this word, and I laugh because my nephew this week was out riding, and someone's horse was loose in the middle of the road, but it had a rope on it. So he stopped his car, and he got out, caught the horse, and tied the horse to a pole, took a picture and posted it on Facebook and said, someone's horse was loose in the road, and I stopped and tied it on. So it won't get hit or cause an accident in the road. So I thank God for what he done. Because most people would have ride by and kept going. But he took it upon himself. To do a great deed. So we praise God this morning for the great deeds that people do in the life. Doing what is right. When you see the donkey or one who hates you lying under a burden. And you would hold back. From setting it free, you must help to set it free. No matter what you see, do what is right. Do what is right. Mm, Lord, I thank you. Continue to seek God's faith. Continue to ask God for guidance. And show you the way that he would have you to go and what he would have you to do. You should not pervert the justice due to your poor in their lawsuit. Don't take, if you ain't got nothing, we gonna take from them for? Don't go suing people just because you can sue. Because this is, you're doing wrong, God's going to take it away. You're not going to prosper. 
prosper by doing what is right, doing what is pleasing to God. Keep far from a false charge, and do not kill the innocent and those in the right, for I will not accuse in the guilty. Acute in the guilty. Do what is right. Mm, Lord, I thank you. You shall not oppress a resident alien. You know the heart of an alien, for you were alien in the land of Egypt. How they was oppressing Egypt. How, they, how Pharaoh did them. A lot of times we look at situations, but we don't feel it's bad. But we know it's bad. Well, it ain't so bad. It's bad. Bad is bad. You can't take bad and make it right. You can't take wrong and make it right. Bad is bad. Oppression is oppression. Do what does says the Lord. That's why they cry out to God to save them from Pharaoh. Save them from their land. For six years you shall sow your land and gather it yield. Six years you should do all that God has commanded you to do. Six years. On the seventh year, you should rest. Whatever it is, let it rest. But the seventh year, you should let it rest and lie follow so that the poor of your people may eat and what they leave the wild animal may eat. You shall do the same with your vineyard and with your olive garden. What are you saying? Once you plant a garden, once you plant a field, and if you leave it that seventh year, what it's going to do is going to reproduce what was planted the year before. And when it reproduces what was planted the year before, people who are hungry, people who don't have, they can go out and glean the fields to get something to eat. So this is what God is requiring of us. Don't plant the land 10 years straight. He said, let it rest one year so it can grow on its own. Then when you come back the next year to plant, your crops are even more wonderfully. Six days you shall do your work, but on the Sabbath day you shall rest, so that your ox and your donkey may have relief, and your home-born slave and the resident alien may be refreshed. God is calling for us to take a day of rest, relaxation. Just sit back and enjoy God. Allow our bodies and our mind to recuperate. Allow our machine to rest and get the service that they need. This is what God said. Because in six days, God made heaven and earth. And on the seventh day, he rested. He rested and made it a hollow, hollow day. So we understand that God, I'm going to take the rest. I did all this in six days. So it was good. So that we have to do rest, relax, enjoy. So we thank God. I understand that growing up, and we did as we rest on the seventh day, there wasn't no work to do, but we grew up on a farm. And understanding that the animals needed to be fed still yet. My mom mind is thinking, okay, if we rest on the seventh day, why are we out there taking care of cows and hoes and chicken and all that instead of resting? Because they understand the animals need to be taken care of. The animals need to be fed just like we need to be fed. We're not working. We're only doing what thus says the Lord, taking care of our animals. Because he left us in charge of these things. If we don't take care of them and provide for them, they can't do it on their own. So understanding why we had to do the things we did on self. But you didn't went out there and work fixing on things and building things on the Sabbath. That's what it means by resting. Introduction. You can imagine a world where justice is a mile equable, where justice is equal to everybody. Everybody's on the same playing field. Everybody's on level ground. There's no rich, poor, white, black, Puerto Rican, Mexican. Everybody is the same. And come to justice, all justice is the same. That would be one of the prettiest things there is. But we know it's not like that on this whole earth. We know it's not. But that's why we continue to pray and ask God to continue to be God of our life. To continue to show us and guide us in a way that he would have us to go with, he would have us to do. 
This was God designed for Israel. God commanded that the justice system from accusing, charges, persecution, and verdict treatment everyone fairly. No matter what you did, they wanted God wanted everyone to be treated fairly. They wanted the whatever happened to one should happen to the other one. Not looking at your race or your nationality to dedict your um, punishment. He want everybody to be treated the same. Partiality, false allegation, and ill will were never intended as considerate for Israel. Justice process. This is what God considered for them. Like I said, he wanted equal for everyone. Justice includes compassion, care of the environment, animal, and servant. He wanted what was right in the eyesight of everyone, no matter what. Telling the Bible story, Exodus 23, 1, 2, 3. Justice demands specific rule. In this, verdict, in this verse, God commands that Israel not spread untruth report. Do not spread lies. Do not spread untruthful. Do not make up something on someone. A word picture based upon the Hebrew understanding. Israel should not pick up a story, take the story with them, and carry the false story to another space. Why? Because a false story is gospel. It's a sin. Leviticus 19 and 16 in 2 Chronicles 12 and 20, that calls home to another person. Do not go out and just make up something on someone and have them in court because you don't like them. You don't like the way they look. You don't like the way they act. Well, I'm going to make this up on them, and then they're going to go to court. I'm going to call the police to have them arrested. For what? Just because I don't like them. This is what God is telling you not to do because that's not of God. When we understand that Christian, we have to be have a mindset to do what does says the law. We have to have the integrity to do what is right. Don't hate a person just because. Don't hate them at all. You might dislike the things that they do, the way that they act, but do not hate them. Because hate is a harsh word. You continue to do what does says the Lord. Continue to stand for God. Continue to treat your neighbor as you want to be treated. Whenever anyone in Israel testified in court hearing that a person was to give honest and fair testimony, give honest and fair testimony, tell what is right. This rule applied to judge witness, prosecution, and defense. In other words, God forbade prejudge and God sanctioning, fair, sanctioning fairness. There was to be no harmon decision were to be unrighteous or wrong or cruelty unjust. Harmon. Hebrew definition, violent, unrighteousness, wrong, cruel, justice. God don't want this. He wants what is right. He wants you to do what is equitable with you, with him. They're bringing glory to his name. Mm. Lord, we thank you this morning. First, Exodus 23, 4 through 5. Twelve tribes joined together as one nation based upon God's covering. Unity among members did not depend on one feeling toward another. Therefore, even if one person hated another in Israel, according to God, feeling do not detect offense of assistance. Don't allow your feeling to get into the decision making. If you see one of your brothers or sisters hurting and down, help them. Do what does says the Lord. Don't allow how you feel about that person affect the what you what God calls you to do. No matter how much you dislike a person, if you see they hurting or you see they're down, you do your best to help them. Because you're not looking for glory for a man, but you sending up your timbers into heaven, preparing a place for you 
when you leave this side of the world. Animal fire and family wealth. Losing an ox or a donkey affect agriculture, production, and transportation. These are how, back in the day, they used to plow the field, transport their goods, do things because automobiles were not around. So this is how, in order to lose an ox or a donkey, your production was cut short. That just like in a factory, on a similar line. If that belt goes down, then we down. Production is stopped. Nothing can be made. Nothing can be shipped out. So that's why God calls us to be compassionate for one another. One, If you see your brothers and sisters are hurting down, do what you can to help them to get back to where they need to be. God placed the responsibility for animals' cares on everyone living in Israel. It meant for Israel there are no excuse for not taking care of one another animal. Take care of each other animal. Watch out. Do what is right. Do what is right. Like I say, we're we not doing it for us, but we're doing it to bring glory to God's name. We're doing things that make, mm, to bring glory to God in everything. How would you respond if you saw that an enemy needed your assistance? Go and help him. Help them. If they don't have gas in the car, put gas in the car if you can afford it. They don't have food to eat, you give them something to eat. You do what does says the Lord. Because understanding that just because they gave you coal, you continue to give them sugar. You continue to do what brings glory to God's name. You continue to send up your temple into heaven so when that judgment day come and you stand before God. He said, come on in, my well and my, my servant, my faithful servant. Well done on a job that you have completed on earth where I place you to do my will and my work. So we thank God for always putting a caring heart in us to do what is right. Don't do what we want to do. Do what is right. Do what does says the Lord. Do what God commands us to do. Exodus 26, 6 through 8. Again, God commanded Israel not discriminate against the poor. Bringing false charges of killing an innocent person will result in God taking action. God taking action. Not man, but God. Whoever accused the innocent will be held guilty by God. A bride would be expected wicked. In Israel, anyone who took a bribe was in danger of valuing money over the truth. Valuing money over the truth. Mm. Which would bind the person from seeing the truth to engage in this type of behavior is not take or searching the truth to bend the law in one thing. Understand that God don't want us to do the wrong. He wanted to do what's right. He wanted to do what is right. It was not to forget their history as previous oppressed people knew that knew the disgracing, disgracing and dysfunctionizing involved. Israel was not to treat others as the Egyptian treated them. Instead, they were to display the love of God to foreigners who may feel alienated Cast out. God wants to be there. To love on the one another. To treat everyone the same. So we thank God. We praise God. I thank God for this this lesson this morning. It helped us to open our eyes and come to realize how God is what God is calling us to do. What does your past teach you about how to treat others? I see how I was treated growing up, being a man. I'm treated the dead sometimes. But in the midst of all that, I still have joy. I still have love. If my brothers or sister, if my enemy, if anyone is hurting and I can do anything for them, I am there. Because it's what God has installed in me to do. No, I'm not perfect, not by a long shot. But what I scribe every day to bring glory to God's name. I scribe every day that it be a light to shine in this old dark world. 
that they would see me and glorify God in heaven and say, I want to serve the God that he served to help him to walk and talk and act the way he act. Exodus 23, 10 through 12. God rests on the Sabbath day to set this set an example for everything God created. Every seven years, God command the nation of Israel rest their land. No plowing, no planting. This seventh year land Sabbath results in the soil becoming more fertile. The poor and the animal were able to obtain food from unplanted field, vineyards and olive gold, olive glow. Fruits and crops would lie on top of the ground, embedding those in need to accept their exceeding product. This is what God produces on his own without man. This is what God gives his people. Go out and, and a gleam. Go out and take in what you did not plan it. Go out and get it. You'll build a fool. But don't go out being hateful and grudging it. Don't go out They're doing this because. Do what it does, says the Lord. God direct, directs that each seventh day on the Sabbath, everyone and each animal should rest. There was a physical and spiritual blessing in resting. Both body and spirit rejuvenate through rest and worship. What provision should we make for our animal, making sure they're safe, making sure they're warm, making sure they're fed, they're watered, making sure that they are taken care of because they're unable to take care of themselves. What should an ideal food program for the poor include? Making sure they have something to eat, making sure they have a shelter over their head. But a lot of times we do our best to try to encourage people to seek God and allow God to manifest in your life to provide you with the things that you need. Pray and say, Lord, I don't know how to do this. And he will send someone in your vineyard to minister to and to show you and direct you in a way that you he would have you to go and what he would have you to do, that you may continue to grow in him and do his will and his work. So we thank God for always making a way, always being a just God, always being a compassionate and understanding God. So we thank God this morning for the people that came along and defeated justice in this world because there's so much unjust. We are facing unjust each and every day. But we continue to hold on to God unchanging hand because he said, I will never leave you, not forsake you. He means that. He said, I am with you till the end of time. He means that. But we have to do what does says the Lord. We have to present ourselves as living sacrifice to God and do the will of God. Yeah, sometimes we don't want to, but we have to think who we serve. Are we serving man or are we serving God? Are we trying to please man or are we trying to please God? I'm always going to treat trying to please God to do what is right. Lord, we thank you. Our summary for, to, for today. Contemporary society often characterize people based on their economic and social status. Unfortunately, this misplaced emphasis results in injustice and overlooked people needed needs. Judging people can lead to various, i.e., blindness eyes that cannot see and give unfair treatment. Make sure you're looking at someone through the spiritual eye, not the natural eye. That's why in Hebrew 11 and 1, we say we walk by faith, not by sight. So we have to look the same thing with people. We can't look at what we see and imagine and think because you really don't know what a person is going through and what kind of battle they are fighting. So as we close with today's prayer, pray for people who have been imprisoned. Pray for police, lawyers, judges, juries, and witnesses. Pray for these people who make a decision over other people's lives. Not knowing, not understanding. Just like a young boy was killed years ago, and his accuser is still alive. And then she comes out and says, that never happened. But they killed the boy. They killed him because of something somebody else said. Do what is right. Do what is right. Do what God requires of us. 
Mm, love you, thank you. Prayer. Thank you, God, for commanding justice. Free us from any bias or abnormal, um, abnormal we have toward others. Please allow us to display justice toward all in our thinking and action. Amen. I thank y'all for allowing me to come into your home on this Sunday morning to bring forth God's word. I pray that it was a blessing to you and that you will go out and do what thus says the Lord. Live a life that is pleasing to God. Understanding God is God Almighty. And he sees it all. He's omnipotent, unpresent. So we thank God for the God that we serve. Have an awesome week. Be blessed and be encouraged. And most of all, stay warm in this year winter weather we have coming forward. Love y'all.